Good morning, beloveds, and welcome to worship on this crisp, I think it's February. <laughs> February morning, welcome to those of you joining us online virtually this morning and to those of you here in the sanctuary. We say it every week and it really is true, right? Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And how delightful to have a place of belonging. If this is your first time uh, gathering with us this morning and you'd like to know a little bit more about the church, uh, you can uh, go to the website or what the website at www.mybloomfield.church, www.mybloomfield.church. And we're also um, uh, present on social media, on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. So please, if you'd like to learn more about this vibrant community, we invite you to visit those platforms. Uh, just a few announcements for our faith community this morning. Uh, the next Sacred Conversation will be held on Sunday, February 20th at noon. Um, there will be a memorial service for Kevin Colvin uh, next Sunday, February 13th at 1 p.m. Uh, with a reception to follow uh, in the fellowship hall. And if you would like to have COVID tests available uh, for you at home, uh, the church has them available. We invite you to uh, reach out to Pastor Sean or the church office uh, so that you may come by and pick them up or have them mailed to you. And we understand uh, that next Sunday, the youth will be collecting coins for the Super Bowl of Caring Collection. That's next Sunday. Is the Super Bowl next week? I'm not a football person. Huh, okay, we're there. All right. So please make sure to bring your coins next week uh, as the, our young people collect uh, for the Super Bowl of Caring Collection. And in my conversation with Pastor Sean this past week, I understand that you all have some really good news. You did a really good thing last week uh, in the unanimous vote to go solar. Uh, and, and so congratulations to you. That's something to celebrate. If you want to give yourself a hand clap, that's okay, right? Um, because we know the, the connection uh, right uh, between um, uh, environmental justice as it relates to social and economic justice and the kind of impact that it has on our community in the world and so thank you as a community member for doing your part uh, and so we give God thanks for you and your ministry now beloveds that we've heard our announcements please come on in that we've heard our announcements for this morning let us take a deep breath and prepare to worship together. Please join me in our unison call to worship. God, I need thee. God, I need thee. God, I need thee. When the path takes before me lies, I see it. Courage flees. I need thy faith. Let us have our opening hymn, Our Eye is on the Sparrow. Please rise to your feet as you are able.
Let us now confess our sin before our loving God. Let us pray. God of imaginable love, you pour out your spirit for us. You offer us the best things in life and show us clearly how to attain them. You offer us true meaning and purpose, but we resist it, we fight it. We look to others and ourselves for life instead of looking to you. We create our own way instead of following the way of Jesus. We use our own corrupting power instead of the spirit you offer us. As a result, we fall short of your dreams for us. Dreams that, if fulfilled, would make your kingdom a more present reality in our lives and in our world today. We repent. Forgive us. We repent and wish to return to you. We wish to return to you, and we offer ourselves to be transformed so that we may continue to grow with you, and in doing so, help to bring the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Now let us take a moment of silent reflection. Beloved, it's by God's grace we are forgiven. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And now, in that same measure of grace offered to us, let us give to with each other, offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. As Summer O'Connor gets ready to come and bring us our Black History moment, we are in the season of Black History, but we, and we are also reminded that Black History is American history, that this is all of our history. So, Summer, thank you for sharing with us today. Here is a speech about Bessie Coleman and why I think she might be part of my family. So, here we go. I think Bessie Coleman is part of my family because I was born to the last name of Coleman. So that is why I think we are related. Back to Bessie Coleman, here is Bessie's story. Bessie was born into a big family. She spent most of her life living in Atlanta, Texas. Her mother was an African-American maid, her father a black Native American sharecropper. Bessie and her 13 brothers would split the work. So some of her brothers would help her father plant crops, and Bessie and the other half of the boys would help their, fa the, their mother pick cotton and wash laundry to make money. When Bessie moved to Chicago with her brothers, she worked as a beautician at a local barber shop. Bessie's brothers were airmen, army veterans. On three, say thank you, veterans. One, two, three. Thank you, veterans. So not only did Bessie learn to fly planes, but she also learned how to do tricks. She can make figure eights in the sky. Now she has her own stamp with her face on it. How cool. Bessie's dream was to open an all-black flying school, but sadly, Bessie died young. But she showed black women what they could do. A lesson I learned from Bessie Coleman is to do what your heart desires. One thing Bessie said is, I refuse to take no for an answer. Say it with me. One. Two, three. I refuse to take no for an answer. Thank you for hearing about Bessie Coleman, my maybe relative. The end. Yeah. <laughs> 
As we prepare for our moment of prayer, I was listening to a young woman speak earlier this week um, on a podcast, and she was talking about her prayer journey, her prayer life, and the times, moments in her life when she could not pray. She was really bothered by that uh, because she'd grown up in the church, the Baptist church, and prayer was a significant part of that community's life, uh, as it is for most communities, yes? Um, and so she said she reached out to a mentor for some conversation and, and just shared her anguish about not being able to pray, uh, not having the words. And her mentor said to her, your silence is prayer. Your presence and posture with God is prayer. Have you ever had those moments in your life when you could not pray and maybe you, you came to church and the community could pray, be th that voice for you? Well, if there are those who are struggling to pray, we want to say that the community is the voice for you today. Let us be in prayer. Gracious and loving God, in the morning when we rise and in the evening when we lie down, and in all the moments of our day, in between. We believe you are with us and love us. We thank you, O oh God, for your eternal presence and your gracious care that follows us throughout our lives. We especially thank you for your steadfast love, which always embraces us and walks with us. Grant us the strength of faith, O oh God, to hold on and to believe. 
And when the way seems unclear, and even when our circumstances seem confusing and overwhelming, help us to climb onto the mountain of hope to experience you in all your majesty and glory, but then to come down from the mountain to live out our lives with faith and care and compassion, service, and love. We pray today for those who are ill and grieving, for those who are frightened and discouraged, for those who are weary and tired. Touch each one of these with your healing power and boost them with an infusion of hope. Bless also the caregivers, loved ones, and friends who reach out to them with help encouragement, and support. And be with us, O oh God, as we seek to be a community, to be a church where all are welcomed and where all are valued, where all are celebrated for the talents offered and for the gifts volunteered. For we know, O oh God, that we are created to be in relationship with one another and that we need the diversity of the various parts in order to be a whole and functioning body. May we be, and may we more and more become that sacred body here at Bloomfield Congregational Church, where we intend to shine a beacon of your love and hope and freedom to our whole community and world. Loving God, on this day of worship and thanksgiving, help us to be conscious of those we love and grateful for those who love us. And help us to remember that you are the power and the hope of the souls that you love and the strength of those who seek to serve you. Enable us this week to see with the heart of faith and to live and walk by trust. We offer this prayer in faith and trust in the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture readings this morning, the first one comes from Psalm 100 and reads as follows. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The second reading comes from Ephesians chapter five, verses 19 and 20. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this moment where your word comes forth. We pray that it will come forth with power, with healing, that it might administer peace to your people. I pray your presence with me. I pray your presence with my accompanist. And even as we are taping and running this live, I pray your presence with our videographer, Amen. Be with all of us now. Open our minds, our hearts, and our ears to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. from your pastor this week, uh, last week, the invitation to be here this morning, I thought about gave him a call and I said, look, I am not a, in a season of preaching the articulated word, right, but I am in a season of music, proclaiming the word through song. And he said, okay, that works. And so I'm really grateful as always to be here this morning, communicating about the scriptures, uh, in a way that speaks to my mind and my spirit right now. And perhaps it might speak to yours in the same way. We heard earlier the reading from Ephesians 5, and Paul is speaking to the Ephesian church about how they ought to live their lives out in community. And I'll read it for you here again, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music from your heart for the Lord, always giving thanks to God, the Father, Mother of everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I thought it appropriate today as we begin our time of Black History Month uh, that I would draw our attention to music in the African American church, and in particular today, the rich history of Negro spirituals. Now, the slaves, my ancestors, they were ingenious in their way of communicating, with their way of communicating to each other, right, in very secretive and clandestine ways so that their masters would not know what they were speaking about. Uh, the spirituals were encoded with secret messages. For instance, Go down, Moses, lay down in Egypt's land. know have heard what that means that was the signal that Harriet Tubman the conductor of the Underground Railroad was on her way and that people were to be ready to go when Israel was in Egypt's land let my people to the scriptures. It's, it's going back to the Old Testament um, story of Moses, right, and delivering his people, the people of Israel, from the violent hands of Pharaoh. 
That is just one. The next one that we will sing for you today is Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. And I just want to talk to you a little about, yes, and I forgot to introduce my accompanist today. This is Brother Paul Cameron. We love working together, and he said yes to being here today, and so we are so blessed. Um, so when we look at Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, coming for to carry me home, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, coming for to carry me home, let's look at the, 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 the meaning of, of this verse, uh, some of the words. Uh, so swing low. Like, so the literal meaning would mean, like, just come down low. Brother Paul, you keep playing, I like that. Literal meaning, come down, come down low. But the secret meaning is, come into the slaveholding slates. Folks are coming. It's time to it's time to run away. Be ready. Folks are coming to get you. In most instances, this was Harriet Tubman. Sweet chariot. Well, heavenly vehicle, right? We 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 hear references to the sweet chariot in the scriptures, but again, in this in this song, this spiritual sweet chariot stands for is representative of the underground railroad and coming for to carry me home. Well. References to heaven, take me to heaven. Ah, but the slaves knew that there was opportunity, though though very, very risky, for freedom. And so come take me north or to Canada for freedom. That's just a slight, small example of what uh, these clandestine, the clandestine meanings of the lyrics in the spiritual. So listen now to Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. to soothe, soothe the pain of, of, of their predicament, of their situation. And yet, it is a song we sing today, also referring to the spiritual medicine, right, that is ours through Jesus. In this particular song, the reference to the balm and Gilead is actually an Old Testament reference, but is used in this scripture, uh, in this passage, excuse me, 
um, the scripture reference is used in this in this song to actually refer to the New uh, Testament uh, concept of Jesus as our salvation. Again, Jesus as balm, Jesus as spiritual medicine. Here now, there is a balm in Gilead.
Now I know <laughs> we'll be watching this together on Sunday, but I'm feeling good. So if my body gets to moving, you'll know why, because I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this room right now in this recording. The next song is He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Again, uh, the particularity of a people saying, we know God is with us, even in the midst of our struggle, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our injustice. We know that God is with us. But today, we know that God is with us. No matter our situation, God is there. And so we sing, he's got the whole world in his hands, and this arrangement is actually by Mr. Cameron. to be in the presence of God, offering our praise, offering our thanksgiving, offering our affirmation and acknowledgement that God, we know that you are with us. And so receive it, our prayer, oh God, our praise today. <laughs>
living in today with so much going on that dis has the potential to disquiet our souls. I find music to be that healing balm. And so I pray that your souls have been healed today. As we prepare to come to the table, I want to invite those of you at home, if you haven't already done so, to slip away quickly and get a glass of juice or whatever beverage you might have, a, a cracker or a bagel, something that would represent uh, the elements this morning. Beloveds, we are here because Jesus has called us strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always the mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table, where in bread and wine he meets us, and through him we who are different are joined to each other. So come. Come not because you understand, but because you are understood. Come. Not because of how you feel, but because God has food for you. Come. Not because you, we, deserve a place, but because Jesus invites you, invites us just as we are. So the story goes that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he, he gathered for table fellowship with his friends, knowing it would be his last night with them in a selfish act of love. We are told that he washed his disciples' feet. Stinky, smelly feet. That is an act of love, isn't it? <laughs> to touch someone's feet. But he washed their feet, and after that, he, they engaged in the meal fellowship, and the word says that he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us seat together the body of Christ. And likewise, after the meal, he took a cup, saying, this is my blood shed for you. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray, dear ones. Gracious and loving God, 
we are so grateful for the gift of your table, a space where all are welcomed, where we can be affirmed in you and our lives together. So be with us now in the partaking of these elements. May they be strength for the journey. In your name we pray. Amen. It's giving time, friends. Giving is not a casual act, is it? It relates God's work to our work. And the disciple Peter writes, as each has received a gift, employ it for one another as good stewards of God's varied grace, that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And so let us give as people whose work is inextricably linked to God's great works of creation, redemption, and empowerment. And there are many ways to give. You may donate online through the website or use through the Give button uh, for those of you who are streaming or the QR code uh, that is available through your Tithely app. Uh, you may also send a check or drop your offering in the baskets as you leave. Give and give from your hearts.
You are the great provider, O oh God, the giver of all gifts. Your love, the only true currency. Thank you for these resources that we freely offer back to you for use in your service. We do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beloveds, our worship has come to a close. I invite you to rise to your feet as you're able, either in body or in spirit, as we sing our closing hymn, It's Me, It's Me, It's Me, O Lord. in Christ, as you leave this place fortified for the week, may you find strength in all that you have experienced and heard today, and even more. May the great ruler of high places, the God of many names, touch you and you and you and you and you, all of you, with the wind that will keep you strong, not only today, but in the days to come. May it be so. Amen.